17 years old. Mike Williams. He was born in Bethel and raised in Akias. He says, I've been involved in mushing dogs since birth and have trained and mushed and raced dogs ever since I can remember. My dad has been racing the Cusco 300 and the Iditarod for many years. His dad's up here at the shoot waiting for him. All right, Mike Williams Jr. from Bethel, Alaska, coming down the chute right now. Michael graduated from Galena High School and, and attended Aptec for one year. He is married to Phyllis Charlie, and they are parents to their proud parents of four children: Peyton, seven; Daniel, and Cole, three; Anna, one. Thanks Michael for joining us right now, live. Here we are. Jake, he thanks for coming on. Running the Iditarod again, and says a big thank you to all his friends. So welcome Michael as he comes into the shoot right now. Clear this out in here. Look at that team. Yeah, Mike. Look at that rough, beautiful rough there. Wow. Very cool. All right, Mike Williams Jr. from the village. Off the road system. Always super impressive. There's his dad. Beautiful moment. Congratulations to the 20 stuff. Back to game 25 in your first minute rock. Not his first. Not his first. Not his first. <laughs> He's not a rookie. There's Didi giving him a hug right there. All right, we got the kids. Let's go look at the dogs like we always do. Squeeze me here. Hi, babies. Hi. How is it out there? <laughs> yeah. How is it out there? Hello. Here's Didi. Hello. Hi, babies. There's Mike right there getting the snacks out. Good to see you. Good job, man. In the village of Bethel. Super impressed with his efforts. Yeah, he's going to get some snacks. <laughs> Look at these guys. Hi. Got the snacks going on. A little bit of. All right, Moses, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Let us all know where you're from. If you know Mike Williams Jr., you know how hard he works. Team Williams Racing, awesome team. Look at how pretty you are. Yes, yes, yes. Look at how pretty you are. Yeah. 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 Is that fun out there? You're home now, baby. You're home now. Is that fun? You are handsome. And strong. Look how lined out that dog is still. That's the CV style harness that we talked about with the H back over the top, relieving the pressure on the back. Sometimes that can cause rub right there. But that's that style of, of CV harness that has a spreader bar at the end. We'll I'll talk more about that in some future podcasts. We have some gear updates for you. Hi, babies. Oh, look at you. Having a little snack right there. I can smell the fish. It smells amazing. Yeah, is that good? Have a little snack right there at the finish. All right. Look at you, wheel dogs. Nice long legs. Beautiful dog. Wow. Look at these guys. That's a beautiful dog right there. You can see he's focused on going forward. Yeah. <laughs> There's his proud father right there on the big blue chair. Getting everything all checked in. Maybe we'll find out when we get down there. Maybe get the reward. <laughs> all right, taking the bib off. There you go. Kids looking for booty. Yep, let's go ahead and look at these guys. Hi. They're looking forward. Look at them all lined out. They don't want to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, pumpkin. How are you? You're a good looking dog. You're a good looking dog. Lined out. Looking good. 
<laughs> that smile. Had their snack. Those beautiful coats. Yeah. Looking forward, looking ahead. The leaders looking back at the daddy, Mike Williams, waiting for commands. So the leaders are so important because they're they're the ones driving the train, driving the speed. Beautiful, beautiful setup there. Again, for those of you watching at home, this is a CB harness system. It's a little different than what you're used to. It's more of a freight pulling system. The harness comes down the size of the legs. Like you can see right there, that red stripe in the back leg. The advantage, oh, there's Mike Williams Sr. He's got to be proud. How are we doing, Mike? I'm doing fine. All right. Mike worked really hard to get this team out here. Came to Anchorage to pack all the things together, get the drop bags ready. He's just always contributing 100%. When they say Team Williams racing, they mean it. Hi guys. How you doing? How are you? Nice. All right, looking good. They look beautiful, these guys. Yeah. Let's take a look at these faces. Look at these faces. Yeah. Oh, nice. All right, up and ready to go. They got their. I-7, the dog lot there. I want to get attention to their beds. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> All right, there's Mike right there getting some more congratulations. P. Kaiser's dad, give him a hug. We got KTVA, John Thompson right there covering it. Got this big W, great moment. Junior. Oh, can we get a, a group shot? Right here. Can everybody get behind? So there's Mike Sr., Mike Jr. And Mr. Kaiser. Hello. Here to support his friend from see Bethel, our, right? See our uh, customer from Musher in. That's right, you bet. <laughs> and it's pretty hard when you're off the road system, right? To do all this? Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna have to get uh, Richie in here. Yep, we'll get. Oh yeah, the Richie real deal. Richie. There he is, Nemrick. Oh my gosh, this is like the greatest group of people ever. <laughs> oh my gosh, feast on this, folks. This is this, the village crew. We got Richie Deal came in six. Pete Kaiser came in fifth. Mike Williams coming in now. These are all the folks who live in around and in, in mush around Bethel, Alaska. Wow. Taking that moment. Wow. Woohoo! All right. Very cool. Mike's going to keep checking on his team. Look at that nice, beautiful, big wolf ruff on his coat. Folks who live off the road system, of course, are bond in a different way. They've got to do everything the hard way, the long way. Look at this guy. You are so handsome. You are so handsome. This is the wheel dog. The wheel dog is closest to the sled there. And the wheel dog's job is to put a lot of power into the forward motion. So taking the commands from the, the lead dog up front. But these are the ones who are driving the power right here. The lead dog sets the pace, the wheel dog moves that big load back there. <laughs> All right. Mike's going to get ready to bring this team down to the dog lot. All right, Mike's senior picking the hook up. Look at that, calling this team up, ready to go. He's got the brake on, going nice and slow out. And there they go, off in the dog yard. Okay. Very, very cool. There's Mike walking off, with the photographer friend of the family, getting a good hug. Nice to see everybody came out. Very light snowfall, really nice temperature. Hey, Casey, you're everywhere, man. 
Hey, was that the best group photo ever? What? Like, that's the greatest hits of, uh... You know why? You see, all the Western Alaska people always show up for our Western Alaska mushers. Right, can you describe that to our... Because I'm trying to explain to our viewers what Bethel and off-the-road system means, but you know intimately. You know what it means? It means to do this takes so much more dedication and more commitment and more all of that stuff because it's expensive. And then our, our weather is... We don't have snow. <laughs> this year, they, all, all three mushers, Richie, Pete, and uh, Mike Jr., trained on ice. And so they had to, you know, deal with the trail that was full of snow and things that they're not, they're not, it's not that they're not used to them, they just haven't been exposed to them this year. So that was, that was a huge challenge. And then just our environment, consider that uh, a musher on the road system uh, takes their put drop bags to the headquarters and does their thing, right? Right. For us, we order all our stuff into Bethel or wherever, put them in the bags, and send them back to Anchorage. So it's like three times as expensive just for drop bags. Yeah, so and Mike flew in, he, didn't he? Mike Sr. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, to get here, we uh, we get fly to Anchorage, then we fly up here, and then we're going to fly to Anchorage, fly back. Plane's canceled. You know, we're kind of stuck here right now for because of a storm. So, um, and the dogs... Um, may go without us there for a little bit. So we got a lot, uh, our, our uh, Kaisers have to line up extra help. That So everybody's involved. So there's a whole group in Bethel taking care of dogs because there's a storm there because we can't get there. Right. So it's just, I and mean, a lot of people are exposed to that kind of thing, but there's a special uh, bond of people that have the same kind of challenge, and that's why we all stick together. Right on. I know I always say off the road system before I became an Alaskan citizen. I didn't understand what that meant. When we say off the road, we're talking. If you had to walk from Anchorage to Bethel, how it's long would that possible. take? It's not possible. I mean, it, well, I, no, I should say, okay, this is something people don't realize and that they should really research because the Iditarod Trail started because Iditarod was next to a gold mine named Flat. And Flat, Alaska was the biggest gold mine in Alaska at the time. And in the fall time, the miners would actually walk to Seward on the Iditarod Trail. So that's how it actually came about, this huge trail to get from there to there. And then in the springtime, they would walk back to Flat to do mining again. And so the Iditarod Trail that we uh, watch our mushers on was this artery. But so yeah, when you say, yeah, you could walk there, but so it would take, um, they, would, they would walk a day's walk to uh, to what would be a roadhouse, right? right. And sometimes this roadhouse might be just a tent with a pot of beans. And then the next day they'd walk another day. And it might take a week to walk from flat to Seward and back. But it's not practical anymore, so we see it in terms of dollars. Right. And so um, Bethel to Anchorage to Nome today I think was 783 one way or some silly thing, some crazy amount of money. So it's really expensive and so there's you know, that's why I think um, a lot of people get behind our musters because they really realize, you know, how, how, uh, what the struggle is. Absolutely. So Mike Williams Sr. said, hey, I'm coming to Anchorage. I need booties dropped off at my hotel. I'm going to try to deal all this stuff, get back to Bethel and pack the bags from Mike Jr. And I literally said, you bet, sir, I'll drive down to Anchorage anytime you want to make that happen and deliver to you because I was so impressed with that dedication. Totally. And, what's, and the cool thing is that guys like you and and our support system, there's just people that jump out of the woodwork to help out. You know, there's a guy, Doug Dorland in, 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 in Palmer, that makes his house available to Pete and us. The dogs show up there. You know, there's guys, people in Anchorage that show up. You know, mushers on the road system, on the road system, you know, they have trucks and they have all these things. It, a lot of times, you know, like Mike, I think they were borrowing stuff. And it's, it's a re real big challenge. You don't get to go home. <laughs> right. Right. You don't drive where, and, and by the same token, that's, it's, it's when people come out to the K300 and race our race, they have that, that backwards challenge, you know, where they've got to go to the airport and come see us and all that stuff. And our, our race is as tough as any in the world. Right. But your people, your locals show up with the snow machines, the boxes on the specially custom built trailers, and they yeah. go out to the ice with the dogs and totally, yeah. they do the reverse, uh, uh you know, help and, and, and caring and. Yeah, host families in Bethel, you know, people jump out of the woodwork to help people coming into town. And you saw that when you came into oh. town. It's totally, totally awesome. And Nome is like that here. We're staying with Bob Madden and his wife, Sherry. And um, Pete's been, this is his ninth year. 
I've been sleeping on the same recliner for nine years or eight years, seven years, I guess, because the one comes seven. But still, we show up, there's a truck, there's a pot of beans, you know, the whole house is yours, don't, whatever it takes. And so, um, and that's something I think this, that all mushers get to experience when they get to know them is that rural hospitality. Because when you're off the road system, people understand that when you're stranded, it's a total different deal. It's right. not like, well, I'm going to go to a hotel. That's not going to happen. <laughs> I'll tell you what, when I saw that group of people, now that I've been a couple of years in a row and saw we, that photo you just took, so much love, so much support, and so much talent. We have people, you know, six and fifth and sixth place, right? Right right there. Pete Kaiser, and Richie six, Deal, yeah. and now Mike Williams come in top 25. Yeah, and, and you know, and Mike would have done, I think, a lot better. I mean, I, I, who knows, but our training has been horrible. I mean, uh, it was ice skates. The K300 had to do a, a loop this year that never ever done before. Um, so um, to come to, you know, and I say this all the time because I've been writing for about dog mushing since it's since the web and mushing came together, and um, it's not about the place; it's about the finish. It really doesn't matter, you know. Okay, we get competitive. We're gonna get we're gonna struggle for these positions and stuff. And that's really important, but for Mike to finish is huge. And I and I didn't count the dogs, but I think he had a lot. Yeah, and they look good. They look great. And so, uh, uh, any competitive musher, you know, um, that's what it's all about. You know, healthy, happy dogs getting in. And both Pete's and Richie's dogs too. Think about, you know, a thousand miles, and they're barking and raring to go. <laughs> Mike's dog just took off out of here. You know. They so, stayed lying out the whole time in the lot there. I noticed that. Yeah, and, and uh, that's something that I, I really respect about all three of those mushers is uh, their dogs are just so tuned into them. You really don't get that um, when they walk up and uh, uh, they'll glance and say a little thing and the dogs are just like, stay. I've seen Mike say, let's go. The dogs stand up and go. Right. You know? He said one word. I was going to say it to my audience. Mike Williams Sr. got in the sled and said, okay. They all Boom. jumped up and went. It was not like, there were, and they didn't have anybody leading them out. Right. You know, it's very, very, uh, and so that's the, that's the connection between the, the team and the musher. And then, and, and kind of, you know, that's how our connection is to them in a lot of ways. But you, Kyle, I'm K, you, Kale, you, great job. This thank year. you. You must be proud. I, yeah, I love doing this stuff. You got your teams in now, right? You waiting on anybody else from? No. No, okay. this, uh. Um, one year we, I did a thing called Delta Force and we had all four mushers. Mike, Mike Sr. was in there also. Oh, right. And so my, my uh, day was pretty filled. Um, this year was a little bit different because Mike was in the back and, um, and there wasn't a lot of news about him so I could, didn't have much to write about. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I love it. Great. And for our audience, just let us know who you are, what you do, what kind of background you have. Well, I'm a computer guy. My name is John Wallace. I'm a computer guy and uh, I actually... I wrote the first dog mushing website, period. Um, when the web first started out, um, I had to, to uh, I had to explain to people what the internet was. You don't even think about that now. So I had to think about what the internet was, or to explain to people what it was. And so the, one of the first websites I drew up, which was one of the first ones ever, was the K300 website. And so, in, in, in those days, we did the first live start. We did the first live audio start, video start. The first blog was called, uh, uh, what was it called? The Daily Bark. And so it, it was, uh, I told people I would write about anything that I saw and it didn't mean anything. Don't believe what you read, but I'm gonna write about it anyway. And um, in those days that was called a web log and that's how blogs came around. And uh, so that's, that's my background and I've been, that was 94 or five. Wow, okay, that was, I just finished college and the internet was becoming barely a thing by like 97. Yeah, so I, was, I wrote that in by hand in code. And, uh, and, 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 the, my, my, and this is a funny story. And it, I got into this really because I had the first digital camera in Bethel. And so, uh, and then so since of my computer background, I was writing code to put the images on the web so I could, other people could see them. And so that's how we did this whole thing. And nowadays it's click and drag and drop and WordPress and super easy. So and get this, and I, if anybody's watching, we'll just keep going Oh, they on. love it. No, but, our but, audience wants to hear, so, they, so, they're a hungry audience. So our first, the first live web start of a dog race was a generator in the back of an Explorer set up next to the race. 
with this webcam that flashed every 10 seconds. And so, and then I shot a wireless shot to the school where I worked that could get, had an internet connection, the only, one of the only ones in town. And so it would, sh from this lake with this generator, with this thing, through this big computer <laughs> lab that I had set up in the back of my Explorer. Wow, and now look at us, we're using GCI, we're getting out with cell phones. That's why I'm so jabbed about, or jazzed about this thing that you're doing because if you look at my background and where it started and where we're at, it's amazing. You know, think about it, it's just totally amazing. You're, you're walking through it uniquely, looking at, uh, even five years ago, I was talking to Ron this morning, or a little while ago, about how we would just pour over images coming through and see, okay, what team, what dogs might be in, you know, um, that was only five years ago. And here you're walking through with your camera and we're able to see everybody in here and the whole nine yards. It's outstanding. Well, That's you've been inspiration to me for sure. You led the charge and now we're just going to build on it, right? Now, yeah, this is where it's going. And, wants and it's, transparency. What's that? Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know what I think, uh, what I'm hopeful of is that people seeing this will, uh, I always think about Musher 49, right? Musher 49, let's say, pretend he's from Maine, he or she. They had to get some people together to give her, give them money so they could drive or whatever to get up here. And they're not going to ever be in the top 20, right? They're, they're going to, they just want to finish, okay? But they're not going to, Insider doesn't really going to see that. And, uh, but the technology that's available, if they have somebody like yourself that just says, hey, I'm going to be here and here and here, then their audience gets to see their musher. Mm -hmm. That's where it's all about. It's, you know, um, I remember Pete's first year, I think he was 28 or something like that. And um, I would just write about everything, trying to keep something going. And I'm always thinking about the people that um, are at the back of the pack that have, it takes just as much money to enter and to put dog bags together and to train for those people as it does for the ones at the top. And so that's why, you know, the technology that you're using is so important because there will hopefully be other people like you that will be able to, and then you're a madman. <laughs> you're seeing everybody come through here. So I'm just, I'm very impressed. Thank you, John. All right. It's been great having you on. Yeah. Let's do it again. Yeah, yeah, totally. So you've got the history for us all. I'm gonna turn the camera around. So you guys can see as my fingers frozen. And now I've got this little, let's see if we can do it there. Use my finger? <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, hit it's that button. Working. There we go. Okay, guys, my gimbal's frozen. We're frozen, but <laughs> here's right. John and I together. All right, man. Big mentor to me. We're in downtown Nome. Mike Williams just came in looking great. Totally. And go back to the, if you're just joining us, go back to the beginning of the feed and watch that, that portrait that you just took. Yeah, where, yeah. where can we find that online? Where, where, where does your Racing. stuff end up? Well, kaiserracing.com, and then also um, I set up Facebook play pages for Richie and Mike and, and, um, and Pete, of course. So. Okay, great. All right, Thank you so see much. Ya. Right on. Okay, so that was cool. We're going back to the days when remember we used to have those little uh, phone line connections and dee dee dee, AOL.com. Well, John back in the day was doing the first ever blog and website for mushing in the United States of America. And he's a real pioneer. He's somebody who struggled a lot with trying to get connectivity way back in uh, 94. Uh, I didn't even have email until 97, uh, right? And, and I'm old enough to know that. So I'm sure all you all watching at home are like, yep, that is the dark days of internet. And, and here's a pioneer who's still at it, still out here, uh, seeing the technology that we have, um, seeing the, the, the way this is going, the, the way that audiences like yourself uh, are hungry and want to be part of something cool, want to ask questions, want to be involved. And by the way, I can't see if there are any questions coming through just because of the we, we are sometimes hanging on to the thread that we have right now, which is GCI, and I love it. Uh, so if you're asking questions, and if, if you've been asking John questions, I just can't see them, but um, when we say off-road system in Alaska, that means that the convenience of pulling into somewhere with what you want to carry is gone. You have to load that into a cargo airplane and fly it one hour or more away at your own expense to wherever you're going. And this, these village systems like Bethel, Cotsview, uh, Nome, Barrow, Prudhoe Bay, where the oil is, they are all, uh, well, Prudhoe Bay is on the road, but the other ones are off the road system, so everything, all the dog food, all the sleds, all the gear have to be loaded into big airplanes, shipped, picked up, dealt with, 
And uh, Mike Williams Sr., Mike Williams Jr., congratulations on a great finish. Your racing kennel uh, blew my mind when I was out there in Bethel for the first time this year at the Cuscombe 300. That footage is actually on my Hill Casey personal page. We've now shifted over to this one so we can grow a bigger audience. But if you all are curious, you can go over there and look at the videos. And um, just, it's a huge effort. It keeps the tradition alive. It keeps, you know, what dog mushing meant to, to these rural communities all about. And um, just my hat, literally, is off to these guys. All right, thank you guys. I really appreciate you being here again. Mike Williams Jr., safely in the gnome with dog, dogs that look good. They're back in the dog lock right now. And we'll sign off for now. See you soon. Thanks.